You want power? You want consistency? Get a grip. Let's do this. It's time for Proving It, presented by Titleist. And I am telling you, these golf balls, Pro V1s, Pro V1Xs in yellow are fantastic. You can see the ball the whole way. If you haven't done it, got to get it. Now, I want to talk to you about something that is really fun to talk about. Get a little consistency, get a little distance in your game. Most people that come to the academy want to get a golf lesson. They say, Michael, I need a little consistency. I need a little distance or help me get rid of my slice. You know what? We're going to cover most, if not all of that, with this one tip. So let me rewind the videotape. I used to work down at Jupiter Island Club down in Florida for a guy named Gil Cavanaugh, one of the most influential people in my life and a phenomenal golf professional, has since passed away, but a, just a, a marvelous human being. And he used to come back to the back of the range, he used to talk to me a lot about different moves in the golf swing. And one of the things that he really admired was that of Sam Snead and this move that Sam Snead has with letting this lead knee kick out and open up the body, helping you re to retain some spine angle, helping you to retain, get a little bit of distance. So let me show you what I'm talking about. We go over here and pull up this Sam Snead golf swing. Now, let me just expand this for you. So here's Sam Snead at the top of his golf swing. And what you're gonna see, you'll notice, is that his lead knee, this is this right here, this lead knee has kinked in a rather large amount. He's actually created a, a little bit of a left heel up in the air. Body has a tremendous amount of coil. You can see how much depth he has in that rotation with his hips and how it almost looks like he's into his, his right uh, heel there. But what I want you to pay attention to is how this lead knee works. So we go over to this next one and I want you to see how much this knee now has backed out. So let me shrink this down, go over here, expand those two just so you can see that. And right over here, you can see how far that knee has gone in. That knee is basically over the instep of the, of the right foot. And now this is just the angle of this camera. When we go over to the one on the right, now what you can see is the knee has backed out and it's outside of the heel print. Now watch this last one. Now look at where this knee is. And he's in a delivery position. So his knee has gone from this spot right here to this spot right here to this spot right here. Look at how much movement that is in those three segments. The knee is, I'm not kidding you, one of the most important and underrated parts of the golf swing, the lead knee. And when I was down there at Jupiter Island, one of the things that I worked on was with a ball like this. And I would put this ball in between my thighs. I would make this backswing, keep the pressure of that ball right in there. And then as I went into the downswing, I would take my lead knee and open it up away from the trail knee. This trail knee wouldn't move. The lead knee would, would open up and the ball would drop out. That was the whole key to the start. I spent hours doing this drill. And what I can tell you is if you get yourself something like this and work on this, what you're gonna develop is a little bit more club head speed. About, I'm, I'm finding that as I do this, you can gain about five miles an hour of club head speed, which is real distance, 12, 15 yards at least. And what you're also going to do is you're going to strike the ball more solidly. That's going to give you a little bit more consistency. Now, what happens with many players, not all players, but many players, is the club then starts to drop down into the slot and you get a, a, a golf ball that's going to start a little bit straighter or possibly even draw, which can get rid of that slice. So, I'm going to put that there for just right now. I'm going to show you how you do this drill. So we make, to the back, we make our backswing, let, the knee, let this lead knee kind of come in. So we have a little bit of space in here. Now at the start, you start spreading out the, the, the lead knee starts working towards the target. It won't go towards the target because the way the body is, is made, it'll actually start working around. 
which will invite the lead hip to work into an open position, which will allow the upper body to open up a little bit more. You'll start to get a little bit of weight out on the outside part of that foot, and that's gonna drive power into the club head. Let me show you what that's gonna look like. I'm gonna do this in slow motion, separate them out. So one, two, three. And when you finish doing that, you're gonna get a feeling of something that you probably haven't felt before. And it's gonna feel like your, your glutes are just sandwiched together, just like this. It's like they turn into a vice. They're going, just like that. And the reason why that happens is this lead hip is back so far that way and the trail hip is in here. The push off of the ground is straightening up the leg. You'll see that kind of move with a Freddie Couples golf swing where when he starts to come through, the, the trail leg just goes straight. The push off is just going straight and the glutes are really sandwiching together. I used to sing this vice, vice baby. That's what I kind of felt like. like my glutes were just a vice and they were just sandwiching together. And that was creating a lot of speed for me. So when I start to go into this motion and I start to now piece it together instead of separating it, which is over time. So now I piece it together, not fast. Now what starts to happen is the golf ball starts to take off. That was a partial swing for me. 173 yards that was in the air. Ball speed was 117.5. Now, you do that for a little while, and here's what's gonna to start to happen. Club head speed's gonna to start to go up. And what I aim for when I do this drill, I'm aiming for a club head speed, or a, a ball speed of about 122 to 123 miles an hour, which normally my six iron, when I go to go play, is about 175. Yet when I'm in here doing this drill, this ball will carry in the 185 to maybe even 190 range just by thinking with this. So. Putting it together again, not fast or not as fast as I can go, but with the concept. Now this was just, again, not as fast as I can go. Watch this right here. Come over here and look at this because this is, this is what this whole thing is about. 122.4 miles an hour ball speed. And that equates to a carry distance of 183. And I'm not going at it as fast as I can. So I know you want to see it, because I want to see it too, right? We're curious. Hey, what kind of ball speed are we going to get here? What kind of distance are we going to get here? Well, again, provided that I make solid contact, I'm going to be able to hit that golf ball, and it's going to end up going the distance that I want. Greg, can you do me a favor and replay that shot? Watch the curve of this shot that we have right here. Look at that. Starts out to the right, turns back to the left. Remember I said to you before we were going to get rid of that slice? Guess what happens? We got rid of the slice. So now we're going to do a practice swing. Full up, knee out of the way, and then it keeps going through. So up, through, and I stay in my spine angle. Let's see if we can get this thing to get up to 123 ball speed. All right, now, really, really good swing, really good distance. Come on up here with me. Look at what we got. I got, you know what? A little adrenaline goes a long way. 123.8, we round up. 124, loving that. Yep, gonna smile all day long with this one. 186, I got out of my six iron. What is that? It's 11 miles an hour of club head speed. I got a little bit of a draw. So what did I end up doing? I got some consistency, ball starting out. I'm not slicing it, I'm not, dry, I'm not fatting it, I'm not doing any of that stuff. Really good distance, I wanted some of that distance, remember? I want some distance, I want some consistency, I wanna get rid of my slice. So, we got some distance. 124 ball speed, 186 in the air. Distance is increased, right? About 11 yards, 12 yards, something along those lines. So I got more distance. I got some consistency. The golf ball starting to respond the same way. I was able to increase uh, ball speed there by increasing that motion, the speed of that motion, the, familiar, the familiarity of that motion gives me a little bit more distance. And then that ball started to have some draw, so I got rid of my slice. All three of those things, you want to get rid of it. I know you do. You send emails to me. You call into my radio show. Michael, help me with this. 
lead knee. Make sure that that lead knee is getting out, separating just like Sam Sneed. It's gonna center the body right in the middle of the footwork, allow you to swing right through, maintain spine angle, club's gonna be in front, you're gonna be happy, and you know what? That's proven it, presented by Title. Time for a transformational tip presented by my friends at Morgan Franklin. So many times we hear you got to keep your head still. You don't want to move your head at all. In fact, moving your head is going to create a bad thing in your golf swing. And yet, if you go through time, you're going to see the best players in the world move their head. Look at players from yesterday. Let's say Jack Nicklaus, Sam Sneed. Maybe even, uh, well, nowadays, probably a, a Rory McIlroy, uh, Adam Scott, Dustin Johnson moves his head dramatically. What does this head movement allow? Well, one of the things that happens is we lose power, we lose speed because we don't have a full motion. In other words, get up here, get ready to hit your shot. The body doesn't rotate. You get right here, come through, and all of a sudden we have an abbreviated follow through. We lose a lot of distance or don't hit the ball as far as we could. And what ends up happening is we run into a problem because I got 170, but I only hit 150. And there's a bunker or worse water in front, and now I'm in trouble. How do we solve that? Well, the way you solve it is to let your head move. And I'm not just saying, let it go this way. I'm actually uh, saying, let it turn a little bit. Use your peripheral vision. Because what happens is, is that when you turn your body, your neck, in effect, restricts the amount of movement that you have. And so what happens is, is that if I keep my neck and my head focused right on the ball there, I will create less rotation with my upper body which will make the club not travel as far, and that will steal some distance. What I want you to do is let your head move just a little bit. Your eyes in your your, uh, head can slide over. In other words, I can look out of the corner of my eye this way, which is what Jack Nicklaus did. Nicklaus would tilt his head like this, and that allowed him to make this full pivot back to here. So what I'm saying is, let your head open up, let your head rotate over to here. And when you do that, what you're gonna get is you're gonna get, well, two things are gonna happen. One, we're gonna make a much bigger turn. So this head's gonna just, I'm just gonna let my head just kinda go over here. I don't wanna lose sight of the ball. I just wanna let my head rotate just slightly to to my right. And now what I'm gonna get is I'm gonna get a good full turn. What it's also gonna allow me to do is create a bit of a draw. Look at that, we just hit the pipe. Greg, can you show me that shot again? Watch how this ball starts out to the right and has a little bit of a draw to it. And watch how it hits the corner of the target. I have not done this. Look at that, dink, pops up into the air, pretty cool. Now, if we come on up to the front here, what you're gonna see is the the art of the draw. And the art of the draw is my horizontal launch has to be to the right which is the push side, and then the face has to be to the left, so my side spin has to be to the left. Well, guess what? I was able to do that. Now, what's also gonna happen is, is that I get that club from the inside, and I generate a little bit more club head speed. I'm gonna start to hit some draws, but they're gonna be long draws. So that one there, it flew in the air 175 yards. Now, watch what happens when I start to add some speed into this. And this is the part that's gonna be really fun, because what you're gonna see is, not only is this ball gonna go farther, it's still gonna have a draw, but my apex, how high I hit the ball, is gonna go up into the air. That one was 96 feet. I'll bet you I can get this thing up into about 110. So here we go like this. I'm gonna let my head rotate. I'm gonna make this full coil looking out of the corner of my eye, and the club's gonna come from the inside. I'm gonna hit this up into the air, and it's gonna go really far. That ball, 117 miles an hour, ball speed, flew in the air about 175. Here we go, just letting my head rotate. Now, hit that shot there. I didn't quite catch it absolutely perfectly the way I wanted to. So, and Greg, will you show me that again? And what you're gonna see is that golf ball is gonna have a lot of turn to it. Look at that ball draw. Now, let's go back to the other information that we were seeking. What we were seeking was 
higher apex. Did I get that? No, I only got about 88, so call it 90 feet. So very, very similar. Could have done a little bit better, but not disappointed. Ball speed, up to 123.7, so that's really good. Distance, remember I was at 175, 188. 0.5, round it up, 189 in the air. Now, what does that all mean? That means that maybe Nicholas, maybe Dustin Johnson, maybe Sam Sneed, maybe Rory McIlroy, maybe they're all onto something. Maybe if we let this head rotate just a little bit this way, we're gonna create a little bit more range of motion. We did a study on this with, with uh, Dustin, 110 degrees of shoulder rotation. Don't think for one second that that 110 in that shoulder rotation isn't because of the amount that he lets his head rotate to the right. We'll do this one more time. So I'm gonna set up here the exact same thing. Let that head rotate out of the way. Feel that distance that the club is gonna travel. Feel the distance of the rotation of the upper body. Good full strike again. This one there, I think that apex is up on that one. Yeah, we gotta show it off, we gotta show it off. Come on up here. Remember, 88, I told you, that's the buyback. It wasn't quite as good as I wanted. I wanted that thing over 100, 105. Ball speed up to 123.7 again. Really good, distance 191, so we're hitting it farther. So what does that all mean? Very, very simple. You want to get a little bit more distance. You want to get a draw. You want to get a little higher apex. You want this club coming from the inside. You just can't get it to come from the inside. No matter what you do, you just keep coming over the top. Well, you know what? Solve that problem. Look at what others have done. They're very successful players. And look at how that head, that rotation of the head, is going to allow the freedom of the upper body, which is going to allow the club to come from the inside, give you a little bit more distance, give you a little bit more consistency, and give you that draw that you seek. And that is our transformational tip presented by Morgan Franklin. In episode 89 last week, we talked a little bit about the club face. I'm going to continue this conversation with proving it. Presented by Titleist. And I'm telling you, this yellow golf ball is for real. You have got to get it in the bag and start using it. It's phenomenal. Now, last, it, 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 I say last week, in episode 89 last week, we talked about the face and I showed you about how this ball bounces off the face and the importance of the face. So many people are talking about Path does this, face does that. Face is responsible for so much and you've got to focus on it. Well, there were a lot of people that loved it and there were a few that said, okay, now that information is great, but what do I do with it? Well, now I'm going to show you what to do with it. Understanding how people get into this shot and understanding the misalignment of the face is one of the most important parts of the game of golf because what you can do before this club goes into motion Anybody can do, but what you do affects what that ball does. So if I take this ball and I bring in my yellow ball and I put my club face in right here and gives you, if you could give me that overhead shot, right here what you can see is that the, the leading edge of the face is now parallel to this PVC pipe that I have down on the ground. Many of your eyes, many of you will see that as square and now what you're seeing is you're actually seeing the top line of the club not the leading edge of the golf club so you see the top line of the golf club is now parallel to this back part of that PVC pipe when I do that well that club is set up in a shut position and what happens when we swing from there well we either hit it with that shut club face and it goes left or we open up the club face as we come through there to try to offset that and now we start hitting it to the right what I want you to do is I want you to understand that when you put that face in now grip it the correct way and for many of you particularly those that are hitting hooks and draws, that club face is going to appear as if it's in an open spot. It's not. It's square. And watch what happens when we hit this. So now I hit that golf ball. It kind of goes at my target. You can see that ball go right into the target and bounce on in there. Now come on up here and I just want you to look at these numbers because this is really good. When I get a shot of 197 RPMs to the left, that is literally no curve whatsoever. Greg, can you show me that shot again? You can see that golf ball. That is 
That's a straight shot. That ball didn't really have a lot of movement, and I love watching that bounce into the target there. And so what I want you to do is I want you to work on understanding how to get the club face square, what square looks like, what open looks like, what closed looks like, and all you gotta do is make one of these little T-bars right here. Then you bring the golf ball in, set the club face into your square position, grip it, this is also going to help you with positioning the golf ball in your stance, and then we're going to hit it. There's another relatively straight shot, maybe just a slight draw I had on that one, but a very, very good shot. Now, how are we going to use this stuff? Well, when we want to start to move the ball, we want to start to understand how to open the face, how to close the face, how to swing along lines that we intend to. So what we do is we take our little T-bar here and I spin it this way. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit a little bit of a cut. So I spin this this way. When I spin that that way, I now want to make sure that my face is back to the square position, but my body is now set up into an open spot. So now I'm gripping this club face in a little bit of an open position. So now, with my body set up over to the left and my club face set very square, understanding where square is, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this swing. And what I'm gonna get is I'm gonna get a golf ball that's gonna start out to the left and it's gonna spin back to the right. Greg, do me the favor of showing me that shot shape again. And what you're gonna see is that ball start out to the left and it spins back to the right and ultimately ends up inside of the target that I'm trying to hit. So that's great. And all I did was just take this little T-bar and twist it. Now, when I want to hit a draw, now I'm going to twist it into the open position. You can use this two ways. One way is you twist it into an in a, well, I'll say a closed position, but leave the club face at the target. So when I do that, and then grip it, you end up gripping the club in a little bit of a stronger position. So I have that club face like that. My body is now set up over there. So now what I have is I have the club face in what would be a closed position. And now when I swing this out to the right, and this is just a little bit overdone, so I'm gonna move that back just a bit. So now I get into here, and now what I'm gonna do when I hit this, this ball's gonna have a little bit of a draw to it. And you can see now, Look at that ball twist over. In fact, overdid it a little bit as I got myself set up there. But Greg, replay that one again for us so that everybody can see how that started out to the right and turned back to the left. So what I'm doing is I'm using the T-bar to teach me what the squareness of the face looks like and then also help me with my alignment. Now, I told you there was another way to do this and that way to do this is as simple as this. You start out where it was before. So it's set up the way we want. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up open or close to this, but continue to leave the face of the golf club in its parallel position to, the, to, the, to this T line. So I get set up like this. Now I go over here, open up the body. Club face is set up square. This will be a little bit of a cut. So I start out and you can see that ball's gonna start out to the left hand side and it's gonna spin over to the left hand, to the right hand side. Look, come on over here with me now. And what you can see is my horizontal launch there, 5.3 to the left, my side spin there, 714 to the right. So Babe Ruth, I Babe Ruthed it to the right. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit a draw and do the exact same thing. So I'm gonna leave my club face where it's kind of going at that target. I'm gonna then set this stuff up so I'm a little bit close to all that. Club face is gonna be in that shut position. Now go ahead and hit this. That's gonna start out and it's gonna spin over to the left-hand side. Is it gonna have enough to get to the target? Yabba dabba do, baby, that's how we roll. You wanna come up to the front? Come on up with me to the front-hand side here. And what you're gonna see is, I got side spin of about 12-12, kinda not a bad number, and the horizontal launch 4.7. 4 Greg, come on, everybody wants to see it again. I do too. Watch this thing start out to the right. Everybody say it, yabba dabba do. Boom, that's in the target. So. 
What I want you to do is understand how to use this face information that I gave you back in episode 89 and apply it this way. A little bit of an alignment stick or alignment device is gonna assist you with getting control over this club face. But you have to know what square looks like. So many of you were paying attention to what's happening with the leading, I mean the top line, instead of the leading edge. The leading edge is the thing that you wanna have perpendicular to that target line or that, that strike line. And when you get that, you'll get control over that golf ball, start moving it left to right, right to left, whatever you want, all you gotta do is understand the face is number one. Pay attention to it, that's proven it, presented by Titleist. Time for a grip tip, presented by Golf Pride. So I'm giving a golf lesson to a guy the other day, and he's saying to me, Michael, I, I have no power, I have no speed in my swing, I'm losing all kinds of distance, I'm inconsistent with my strike, and I look at the club face and there's marks all over the face, and I watch him hit a ball and I go, Oh man, you're holding this club improperly. You know what you need? You need a hammer. Now why is a hammer gonna be advantageous for you? Because when we grab the hammer, we grab the hammer so that we can do this. Now most of us grab the hammer with our, with our uh, right hand and we hammer like this. This is our, our dominant hand. There are many of you that are left-handed and you'll do that same thing as well and you'll go like this. But you never grip the hammer like this. You just never grip the hammer like this so you can lever your elbow. We don't hammer like that. We hammer like this. That's how we hammer. Well, guess what? How you hammer is how you hold. How you hammer is how you hold. Now, what are some of the important things to understand about how we hold a hammer? Well, the first one is, I wanna give you just a little bit of an idea. Right there, you see two of those green spots. That's gonna be my thumb pad. That's gonna be my heel pad. These are very important parts of the grip to understand because when we hold the club, what I want is I want both of these two green dots to sit on top of the hammer. So you can see when I hold that in my fingers and I set to the, put the heel pad on there and the thumb pad on there, now I'm holding the hammer so that I can create leverage and strike the nail without having to move my elbow. I can hit it that way. Well, guess what? I want that same power, that same effortless power in a golf swing, how I hold the club. So I take my grip. Now you can see right there, that says a line. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that green dot and I'm gonna put it right on the align and then let this green dot touch that middle finger of my hand, just like that. And when I do that, now I'm holding this club in a way that's gonna allow me to lever the, the club. Many of you are sitting there thinking to yourself, well, what happens if I don't? Well, then you lever the elbow. So now we get in here like this and we make a swing and we lever the elbow and this goes straight up into the air and this becomes your bend. You lose all your width, you lose all your power, you lose, lose all your consistency. So now we get a golf club. Now what I do, what I teach my students to do, and what I'm telling you to do, is to hold the club in front of you, wrap it with your fingers first. So we go fingers, then pads, then thumb. And when I do this properly, and this is one of the things that Hogan talked about in his book, when you hold this grip correctly, you should be able to hold the grip, hold this club, with four fingers off of the club using the, the index finger and the heel pad of the, the lead hand to hold the club. If somebody came here and tried to pull this out of my hand, you couldn't. And I can still move this club without much of a problem. I'll use the thumb to support that, but I can support this club with the heel pad, the index finger, and the thumb right there at the top. So now I have all the pressure, I have all the power, all set up. Now I go fingers, thumb, now I put my hand, my other hand on it, and now what I'm gonna do is when I swing, I'm gonna let this club have some leverage to it. And you can't believe how far you can hit this ball without any effort whatsoever. So I'm just gonna lever this club up into the air, just like that. And now I swing, I just barely swung the club. I didn't move at it at all. There was no shoulder rotation, no nothing. And yet, when I come up here, I carried that 170 yards, six iron, 170 yards, I got 115 miles an hour of ball speed. And I didn't move my body at all. That's the thing that's so important. Because when I start to add that into it, and with the right grip, with the way I put my hand on here, fingers, pads, and then thumb, 
Now I do that. Now watch, watch what happens when I start to put my body into it. My golf club's going to get past parallel. My club head speed's going to go way up. And I'm going to hit this really far. Maybe even hit a draw. So now what I got was I got a shot that's drawing back to the flag. Greg, can you, can you replay that one for me? Let's see what this looks like. Look at that. Start out to the right and turn back to the left. And I am sure, though I didn't see it, I am sure that that golf swing got past parallel. It certainly felt like it was a lot farther with that wrist hinge. Now I'm going to hit one. Fingers, heel pad, thumb. I'm going to show you one other thing here in a second that's going to teach you how to hold this club properly so that you don't get confused with this. Now watch this one. Again, same full swing. Greg, can you replay this one as well? Because what we're going to see is we're going to see a big draw on this one. Watch this. Look at that start out there. Look at that twist over to the left-hand side. That's because of the way we're holding the club. Now, I want to show you one other thing. Remember I told you I was going to tell you something. One of the ways that messes up your grip, one of the things that you do that messes up the way you hold the club, is you grip it with the club head on the ground. And the club's coming out on an angle and your arm is on an angle. What you'll tend to do is just grip it this way and you go right to the pads first and you get the, the pad, the heel pad, underneath or on the side of the grip. And you'll see when you hold your club incorrectly, you'll be able to read that a line right there at the top of the grip. When you can read that align, you know that you're not in the proper line. You do not have the club properly held in your hands. That's incorrect. What we want to do is make that align disappear by getting that green dot right over the top of that align. That's going to allow me to hold this club correctly. Now I'm going to get some leverage. Now watch the distance because now I've got my draw. I know I'm going to hit a draw. Watch this distance that we get right here. There you go. That's a good strike. Watch this one. Wave goodbye to that target. See ya. Right over it. Come on up here. Look at all the good things that are going to happen. Apex 105. Yeah. What we got? Ball speed 121. You betcha. How about distance 180? And that's just by employing that leverage into the, the, the uh, wrist and allowing that club to have a little bit of length in the backswing. So this is what I want you to do. It's very simple. You get yourself a glove, take a pen of some sort, put a little dot right there on the heel pad, put another dot on the thumb pad, and then when you hold the club, you take that little dot on the heel pad, you cover up that align, make sure that that second dot from the thumb pad is touching the middle finger or the index finger of your, of your lead hand right there. That's going to let you know that you've got the club levered properly. And then do as Hogan did. What you're going to do is hold this, take those three fingers off. You can see right here in camera one how I have that. These three fingers are off, the thumb is off, and I have control over this club. And what I promise you is when you do that, you're going to have control of the club. You're going to get a lot more distance. And as you get more distance, you get more confidence. You won't have to swing so hard. Let the leverage, let the lever that you're creating by how you hold this help you set up properly. And by the way, go get yourself a hammer. I'm telling you, it's going to help you improve your golf swing. It's going to help you improve your game. And it's going to give you that power you look for. And that is a grip tip presented by Golf Pride.